Welcome back to Anime Cons TV. I'm Doug Wilder, and one of the things we're going to be talking about this week is something we touched on a little bit before, but we decided it would be fun to go back into more detail. If you watched our past episode, uh, episode 617, which was last season, we talked about uh, some of the first steps for what to do when you were prepping for a panel, and one of the things we decided would be good to touch a little bit more on is the application process, because that's something that a lot of people stumble upon, and it's actually something a couple of our viewers actually came to us and said, hey, we, we want to know a little bit more about it. So I'm just going to go through some of the little general stuff. Uh, we'll be using the uh, applications for Anime Boston as an example. Understand that every convention is different, but the reason we picked Anime Boston is, one, it's our local convention, um, but also they happen to be online right now, so it's just handy for us to use it. Once again, remember, every convention has it a little bit differently, so this is just one example and a way to get started. Uh, first and foremost, if you're applying, make sure you check the deadlines. Uh, you don't want to be putting together your idea for a panel, even if you're just applying uh, last minute. You should have a rough idea. When, um, if you have a phone with a reminder app, maybe set yourself a reminder you know, a couple days before the last deadline so you can say, oh, oh, I need to go apply. Um, so first off, one of the first things, if you look at it, they ask you for a, a panel title. And this is something I think st a lot of people stumble on. And that's trying to be clever, trying to you know find a joke or something. But honestly, don't try and be too, too uh, sneaky with your, your panel title. This is the first thing people are going to see when they look at the program guide, when they look at, say, the guidebook app or something like this. And your panel title should absolutely have truth in advertising. If they can't figure out what your panel is just by reading the title, or at least have a bit of an idea that enough that they want to read the description, it might be, you might want to rethink it and ask yourself, would someone who doesn't know what this is be able to figure it out? And best way to do that is ask your friends and say, hey, I'm going to do a panel on this. I want to call it this. What do you think? Or even just say, hey, I'm going to name a panel this. What does that make you think? And it's a good way to just kind of get an idea of what you're going to be doing. And that's super important because sometimes you could have a great idea, but people won't go to the panel because they have no idea what it's about from the title. Next up is the description. Um, and... And my Boston here, they actually have a limit for how much the, the, how long the description can be in their program guide. As you, see, you can see, it can be a little longer in the uh, website version, but the panel describe, uh, description in the actual program guide, physical program guide, will be short. So this will be, you know, keep it short and sweet. Um, if you've ever heard the phrase, you know, having an elevator pitch for something. What that means is have, being able to describe something and sum it up in the length it would take for an elevator ride. So if you can only say it in like two minutes or, or something, that's good. Two sentences is really all you need. Once again, don't don't try and be too clever. Just, just make sure you, you have the right information and the right hook. And that's something just like, hey, you want to know more about Gundam? Cool. We're going to talk about Gundam t at this panel. Things like that. Just, once again, don't don't try and do too many in-jokes because that loses potential new audience members that might not know a lot about the thing you're doing but want to find out. So it's it's always good to leave them wanting more. Um, also in the uh, uh, panel application, they uh, most conventions, like such as Anime Boston, will ask you, what is your panel actually about? And this isn't something that's going to be publicly visible, but it's a good way to really write up everything that you're doing in your panel. Like, what makes your panel special? You know, there are so many panels that are just the same thing that everybody does at every convention, and that that's not appealing to conventions. What conventions really want to see are panel ideas that are unique, or at least if they're not unique, have a lot of really good information. They want to be able to say, hey, this is a panel that's going to teach 
people something new that they didn't know already, and it's going to draw them in. Um, and when I say teach, I really mean new information. We've all been to those panels where it's, you know, ask a cosplayer this thing, ask, you know, a ask a Hatali, ask an agent, things like that. And honestly, those panels are kind of dime a dozen and very hectic and very, uh, very boring to people who have been going to many conventions. So uh, for organizers, they don't want that because th they're going to have tw 10, 20 of that kind of panel application. They would prefer to see more unique programming so they can spread it out throughout the weekend. And that's something that's really going to be good. The other thing to remember is how is this relevant to the convention that you're going to? We are talking about anime conventions usually, but there are some times where that might not fit. For example... If you're going to a Doctor Who uh, convention, you're probably not going to be one to submit something about Lord of the Rings. It's, you know, not that people don't like that, but that's not what the convention's aiming for. Many anime conventions do have some carryover, but others kind of trying to keep a hard stance of, you know, we're here for Japanese animation, Japanese comics, things like that. So it's not that if that the, dis the organizers dislike, say... Uh, Battlestar Galactica or something like that. It's just not what the convention's about, and that's really important to remember when you're applying for a panel is how is it relevant to the convention at whole, as a bigger whole. Um, so the, the other thing I want to say is when we're looking at things is they ask you about, say, what time slots you have. And, and one thing that a lot of people sometimes hurt themselves with their application is listening off too many times that they can't do it uh, a panel. If there's one or two events that you know you don't want to be scheduled against, say you're a costuming panel, you don't want to be scheduled up against the masquerade or something like that. That's cool. But if you say, "Oh, I can't do it," twelve all these different times, and it's half the convention, then you're not as appealing to the convention staff because then you have a they have a limited number of places they could potentially put you. If they're, uh, if you're wide open to a broad range of options, then it's much better. I mean, you can give them an idea, like, what time you frame you like. Oh, I'd prefer to do something around 6 o'clock on Friday night. That helps them out because that gives them an idea, but not necessarily constricts them to too many things. Now, the, the, the other thing is length, now that we're speaking of time. And if this is your first time doing a panel, or if the, especially your first time trying out a new idea that you have, I would only said ask for um, a block of 60 minutes, which is pretty good time. And if you run out of material, you're not dragging things out too long. And if you have too much, you know, you've learned you'll learn for future times that oh okay, this is a panel that I can go on for longer, but. 60 minutes, you know, one hour is a pretty good block of time. And if you go short, as long as it's not too short, generally people are going to be pretty satisfied with what you did. It's just going to, and finally, like I said, just ask, uh, you know, look for a lot of different times and be, the more open you are for time slots, the more appealing you are to a panel a selection staff. Uh, finally, one of the other things is, you know, special requirements like audio, video, and stuff like that. Something that's very important and very helpful is to learn the terms of things that you need. For example, a simple, like, headphone jack like this, which is what you would use to get audio out of, say, your laptop or an iPad, is a 3.5 millimeter audio, audio output. Uh, most uh, laptops have a VGA uh, out output for connecting to a, another, either a bigger monitor or, in this case, a projector. Uh, iPads, if they're older, were the 16-pin. Now they're Lightning and need a special adapter co to connect to VGA. So, when in doubt, if it's something you need to make your panel run, especially if it's audio-video, put it in your request. Even if they they say, oh, every room has this. If you need it, put it down. 
that way you're covered, that way the convention knows that you need these things. And not to put down conventions, but it helps you say, so if something does go wrong, and perhaps a pen, uh, convention comes back to you and say, oh, well, you weren't prepared, you can say, these were the requirements I asked for, um, you know, that, and you didn't provide them. That way, at least you're covered that you can say, hey, I let them know. I mean, obviously you're not going to ask for things like, hey, I want a smoke machine and lasers on the show, uh, in my panel room, but just the simple stuff. It, if you're running a, a workshop, maybe mention that you will provide certain supplies, but you might need a couple extra things, like, say, a couple extra trash bags for, for art, things like that. When in doubt, ask for it. Never assume that the convention has it. It's especially some things like I mentioned the iPad adapters for VGA cables. Those are something that not every a lot of conventions have handy, but so it might be good to bring your own. But it never hurts to ask. Um, that's a lot of the big things for applying for a panel. All like I said, always, always, always ask. Um, and oh, uh, whether or not uh, one of the things they also ask is for whether or not you'll have associate panelists, you know, people to join you. Uh, if you've never done a panel before, I highly recommend getting one or two people that you're really good with, good friends with, that also know the material you're talking about. It's a lot easier to run a panel if you have a, someone to bounce ideas off of. So ask for, for them and make sure you get their information well in advance of applying. It's not fun to try and have to call a friend two minute, uh, two hours before the panel application deadline is up and saying, hey, I need to know your contact info. Get, get it get it early. And finally, um, 18 plus. That's another thing that's a really hard topic. Um, and it's better to ask, the, if you're not sure, I'd say don't, uh, put, don't put it down, but make a note, like a lot of, uh, panel application forms will have a section that's other information. So if that's something that, uh, you, th you, you think it's okay, you know, if you're not sure, put it as no, but maybe make a note in the other information field that if they would prefer you have an 18 plus panel for depending on the content you're talking about that you are okay with making that 18 plus. So that's roughly what we're talking about for uh, panel preparation when you're applying. Make sure you apply on time, make sure you have an appropriate description and title, and make sure you spell out all your needs within the uh, for what the convention can provide for you. That's it for us for this week on Anime Cons TV. As always, feel free to connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Tumblr, the whole shebang. And if you have any questions, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you. And until next time, I'm Doug, and I'll see you around.